Growing up is already full of challenges, but when you add a learning disability that's undiagnosed on top of all of that, it can be a real challenge to get through life. A new book out called Dyslexic, My Journey, shares one man's story about overcoming and now helping others. Author Michael Belzano joins me now. How are you? It's thank an honor to you meet for, you. Thank you for having me. Um, this book is just, I told you, I cried through a lot of it. and. Um, I wonder if you can, if there's any way you can kind of describe the way dyslexia affected you as a smaller child, what you went through. Well, again, it's almost talking, the book talks about practically two different people. One child and who failed at everything he ever did. And then an adult who succeeded. Uh, Spoiler the child, alert, he has a PhD from Georgetown, but right. things didn't start out that way. Well, the child, the child um, was, um, he didn't play with other children. He played with guns, knives, and fire, and actually burned down a garage accidentally. Um, but what happened there was, uh, I was a loner. In the 1930s and 40s, no one knew the, what the symptoms were. Okay. So what happened with me is I, um, I left school in the ninth grade. I actually, I was thrown out of two schools before I got to the third grade. I left school in ninth grade and uh, went through a job a week, and I became a garbage collector. Um, now, that said, I hurt my back as a garbage collector, couldn't lift cans. I was declared physically unable, dyslexic, the whole bit. And um, I started an optical apprenticeship. And that, that was my salvation because I learned how to grind lenses. And slowly but surely, I became an optician. I ran an optical company. Then I started college. I went to graduated magna cum laude, got a full scholarship to Georgetown. And when I graduated, the, um, the university ran a, a story that ran in the newspapers, Garbage Man Gets Doctor's Degree. Hmm. And Richard Nixon read the story, and suddenly I w wind up being the third highest ranking Democrat in the Nixon White House. How did that happen? Well, you know what? He was interested in workforce communications, which is what I do. I've been doing that for 45 right, years right. now. Okay? And the interesting thing about that part of it was, Working with people all the time, you get to understand everybody's dialects, everybody's needs, okay? So what happened was um, he, he, he basically uh, nominated me to be the director of the Peace Corps. And I was unanimously confirmed by the United States Senate. Did you ever look around and go, what happened here? Right, right. <laughs> and that's, that's when... People kept coming to me because you know, I, I speak in public a lot. Mm -hmm. And people constantly ask, how did you get from where you right. are from where you started? And what I tell them is the first thing was the beginning of it all was the apprenticeship program. This book is written to provide help and hope for parents with learning disabled children. And they fall into two categories. They fall into the K through fourth grade. If you don't catch it there, you got a real problem. Yeah. And for those people, I have an appendix in the back of that book that focuses on all of the symptoms so that you can read them from NIH, from the Mayo Clinic. Mm -hmm. So you got all that. See, You're then armed they, with that info. Oh, that's right. It's, the book is chock filled with information. That. The second thing is it deals with young kids who, right now, the whole world is trying to get everybody into college. But you know, you don't need a college degree to capture the American dream. Mm -hmm. I had it when I was an optician. I just decided I wanted to study history. So what happens is this book tries to help people, understand, parents especially, to help them understand that this child may not be ready for college right now. There may be other things he needs or she needs to pull herself together, to find out where they want to go. To okay? transition. Correct. Uh, and if we back up That's and sort right. of open the horizon a little bit, we can see some of those Correct. possibilities. Absolutely. I want to read this one thing from you being a child that this just got me. Um, you write, from kindergarten on, I was a problem. I disrupted other students laughing, joking, and fighting with the other boys. I was spanked constantly. When spanking didn't help, I was forced to sit quietly in the front of the room, wearing a girl's dress and a bow clipped to my hair. This did not have the desired effect of embarrassing me. I was horrified. That is abuse. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, you laugh now. Well, but in those days it was, but you know, see, the th I'm going to say it, something. It needs to teach us something about the way we view differences in disabilities and where we've come from and where we need to go, to me. Yeah, well, 
even when they threw me out of school, the nuns really liked me as a person. But their, their academic standards were so strict, I, you, you really belong in a public school, not here. And then I went to another public school, and I bombed out there. And then I went to a, another public school, which, I mean, you could get away with anything you want there. Um, I read at the fourth grade level when I was 21 years old. When I got off that garbage truck, I not only was physically handicapped, I was mentally handicapped. Right, and, you, and it's pictured on the cover of your book because you saw letters transposed. Oh, yeah. You saw them that way, and there was no way around that. Yeah, I'm still dyslexic. I cannot read out loud. You can't read out loud if you're dyslexic because you have to look at every word. Mm -hmm. And so there's no, there's no emotion in your reading. It's just jump, jump back and forth. Words transfer, letters transfer. I mean, nine out of 10 telephone numbers that I dial are wrong because I can't see them. The numbers are constantly yeah. switching on me. Speed but you know, dial you is your friend. Yeah, <laughs> but you, you, can, you can overcome anything if you go slowly. Look, I have a PhD in political theory. So you learn by going very slowly, reading mm -hmm. every single word. And that's the way I overcame this thing. So I have two questions about that. You, there's an amazing amount of resiliency. You were getting these messages constantly as a kid. Nope, failure, out of here, oh, yeah. blah, 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 blah. But somehow inside you, you had the confidence to say, I'm going to keep doing things even after I'm injured from this job. I'm going to keep on going. I'm curious about that. And then I'm also curious how that transfers into the message you have for parents so that we can kind of think anew about differently abled people. The thing that turned my life around was the apprenticeship program. Because, you know, it, it taught me how to work with other people. Mm -hmm. It gave me pride in what I was doing, self-confidence, and following directions. You will measure twice and cut <laughs> once. You will do what I tell you to do. And slowly but surely, you go through the routine and suddenly you have pride in yourself. Now, the other thing, too, for me, was an apprenticeship program is earn while you learn. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to spend tens of thousands of right. dollars to, to go, go to, to school. school where reading right. is the central That's right. activity. That's right. right. But you see, it prepared me to learn to read slowly, carefully, and, and, and slowly but surely, I was able to read very intricate passages and, and mm -hmm. understand them. Okay? Um, but what happens, in the, there are two different people. One person was always viewed as the success. The other one was always viewed as the failure. And there's that bridge you have to cross. And it's very hard to do because it's very easy to be a failure and it's a comfortable place to be because you're not challenged. Mm -hmm. You're just left there. But once you begin to try to improve yourself, now you're challenged and if you, if you fall, it hurts. So those are the things that parents have to understand. The other thing too is everybody wants their kid to get a college degree. That may not be what they need now. Mm -hmm. What they need now is enough discipline to find out where they really want to go. So that's and to build that bridge. And to build that, you that bridge about. yourself. This book is just so good. I mean, it's, it will touch your heart, but it'll teach us a lot of things. Thank you so much for coming in. Well, the pleasure is mine. Thank you, you so much delight. for having me. Um, uh, don't go. <laughs> I want you to stay. <laughs>